So, province has done all this work on this document, they've got great policies. What do we need to do to create some action? We've already talked about policy is, uh, is a top-down process. It provides that big picture, gives us the horizon, but it doesn't give us a lot of details. In order for those policies to be implemented and implemented successfully, it really relies on a bottom-up approach. And that involves NGOs, it involves city staff, through the senior management at city staff, uh, up to uh, local politicians and then up to the provincial politicians. <clears throat> so BC's population, again, according to the province, is expected to grow by 1.4 million over the next 25 years. Now, if we translate that to the impact on the Comox Valley, that means about 35,000 more people will be living here in 25 years. That's pretty close to double the size we are today. So where are these people going to live? What values or features of the Comox Valley need to be protected, preserved, and restored? And again, going back to Jack's presentation, the, the inventory work that they have done to date really uh, lays the blueprint of the values that need to be protected, restored, and preserved. How are we going to provide service to double the population, sewer and water service in the Comox Valley? Particularly, given that the Comox Lake, which is the primary drinking source, is fully allocated. And not only is it fully allocated, it's probably over allocated during drought conditions. What actions are we taking now in the Comox Valley? Well, we've already talked a little bit about this. There's the sustainability strategy, and that has been an excellent initiative that has crossed jurisdictional boundaries. Uh, the regional growth strategy that's currently underway the regional water strategy, regional sewer strategy, and water conservation. This has been a heated topic in the Comox Valley, the idea of universal metering, which is really a fundamental basic uh, tool for helping conserve water, but yet it's been hotly contested and, and, and very controversial. Uh, what we need is strong local leadership to ensure that these types of things can happen at a local level. Other things like uh, drinking water protection plan, and a water management plan. These are things that, uh, again, the local governments can work in cooperation with senior levels of government to ensure that we've got the regulatory tools in place to, to meet those provincial policy objectives. So what other actions can we take, given those things that are underway now? Well, again, we've, we've talked about uh, the need for a regional approach. And when I say regional approach, I'm not talking about the regional district. I'm talking about cooperation across uh, jurisdictional boundaries. So whether you're in the city of Courtney, the town of Comox, the of Cumberland, regional district electoral areas, whether you're an NGO person, whether you're a level of government, it, it requires cooperation, collaboration, communication, and coordination at all levels in order to be successful. Talked about the need for land and water managers to know what makes a stream healthy. And again, the need for improved coordination and uh, improved data um, and staff retraining to make sure that we have the, the managers in place that fully understand uh, the expectations of them and uh, how they can achieve those expectations. Talking about expectations, we need to also identify tangible targets. And again, the more we can align local targets with provincial objectives and provincial policies, the greater our chances of success. We also, a lot of times we get excited about uh, establishing policies, establishing benchmarks or, or performance targets for ourselves, but we don't always um, go back and, and uh, really evaluate whether we're in fact meeting them or not. And that's a critical piece as well. We need to ensure that as we establish these benchmarks, uh, we're measuring whether or not we're in fact meeting them. Are we meeting them? If we are, great, let's celebrate that. If we're not, we need to make some course adjustments to ensure that uh, we can improve our successes. Another critical component, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, some of the regional initiatives that are underway now, but um, that, that is really only beginning to scratch the surface of what needs to happen in the Valley in order to have true integrated management planning success. Uh, we are. We need to look at integrated stormwater management planning at the watershed level. We need to look at regional transportation, regional parks, because all of those services and issues have 
impacts on uh, the watersheds and on our on uh, the values that we're trying to protect within those watersheds. We need to look at uh, revisiting OCP, official community plan policies, zoning bylaws, building bylaws, to ensure that they're well aligned again with those provincial policies. And what's key throughout all these suggestions that I've got is to ensure that the local action is aligned with the provincial policies. That's where you can get success, that's where you can get support. Uh, updated subdivision standards, I think Derek mentioned that briefly at the onset, ensuring again that we are thinking outside of the box, we're, we're um, uh, looking at new ways of processing development and the standards that they need to build to, to ensure we're protecting uh, our values. Uh, development permits, uh, again, are an excellent tool that we can use locally, uh, not only in terms of uh, the, the guidelines that go with them, but in the areas that we're looking or that we establish as development permit areas, I think, again, it's an opportunity for us to look at expanding where we require development permits and then using um, uh, updated development permit guidelines to, to ensure that development happens in a sustainable and smart way. Another key issue is consistent approach to development. We've talked about the multi-jurisdictional challenges of the Comox Valley. And, uh, you know, what we want to try to avoid is the developer shopping around for the best deal. Uh, one municipality or one jurisdiction can take some great steps forward, but if the developer is able to, to just go across the street and find a, a lower standard or a cheaper way of developing, uh, they're going to they're gonna look for the lowest common denominator. So it's important when you're dealing with multiple jurisdictions that you have a consistent approach to development, a one-stop counter for, for all jurisdictions. Um, another uh, action that we can do locally is coordinate our request for provincial assistance and support. <coughs> if we are in fact uh, making sure that our actions are aligned with the provincial policy, we have uh, a great opportunity to, to go and get provincial and federal support. Whether that means dollars, whether it means resources, whether it means information. And those, th those are things that we don't need to do independently. Uh, if we do these types of things at a regional level, cross-jurisdictional, uh, we'll have greater success. Quantify local baseline conditions, and again, some of the work that uh, Jack described earlier has done a big piece of that. I think uh, one of the more critical things is, is really confident, coordinated leadership. And uh, when I say leadership, that means not only at the political level, but really at all levels, whether it's NGOs, whether it's staffing, uh, local government staffing, or whether it's political. Uh, we need to be confident, and coordinated, and unified in our, in our leadership on these things. And hold the provincial government accountable. They've identified that horizon. They've given us that long-term vision uh, that we're supposed to be tar uh, shooting towards and driving towards. So we, again, collectively need to ensure that we're holding the provincial government accountable for the support that we need in order to succeed. Finally, be transparent and accountable to the communities so that uh, uh, our citizens, our, our um, people that live in the community and enjoy these things, uh, that they understand how we're doing. Are we succeeding? Are we failing? Are we doing a good job of, of preserving what uh, is important for this community and for this area? So this was supposed to be questions, but I think now I'll just replace that with a lunch. Thank <laughs> you.